Congratulations to you both. I had Thank such you. a scary time last night watching the collection, <laughs> but it was such a fun movie, I'm sure. Uh, what actually, what inspired you both to, you know, make the collection? Well, I, I did the first movie, uh, The Collector. The, the thing that really turned me on about it was, um, it was basically 75 pages of me and another guy. You know, a bad guy and a worse guy stuck in a really bad situation. So you're the bad guy. And there's Facing a worse, the worst guy, right? Yeah. So, you know, 75 pages of no speaking, you know, presents a lot of challenges from an acting standpoint, from a filmmaking standpoint, of conveying all that without... Through eyes. Through eyes and through action. And so, you know, and this movie is just like the, you know, the first on steroids. Right. So it's just up in the ante, you know, bigger, bigger everything. Right. Yeah. Bigger, better... Yeah. More challenging, I'm sure. More violent. More violent. <laughs> yeah. But at least I was talking to both Marcus and Patrick. At least for me, you know, the, the there's a hopeful part of this film because I I can't watching. I don't like watching film that you know kind of leave you hanging and yeah. you know there's gonna be the next part. It drives me nuts, and I'm sure it drives most audience <laughs> nuts. But but you know the collection. I'm like yes, I can go home and sleep soundly, you know, yeah. knowing. Arkin is like, he's my hero, he's our hero, and yeah. he's pretty yeah. tough. Yeah. So does the, your character. She's she's one, you know, yeah. tough girl. She definitely gets a chance to to show her stuff in, in this. So um, that was part, that was mainly what attracted me to the film. I actually hadn't seen the first one. Um, I was aware of it, but I when I read the script, I just thought that the character was written so well, and, and to have like a strong young female um, who gets to become even stronger and sort of discover something about herself. It was, I mean, it was written really well and it read really well, so I was excited to get the chance to, um, to come out swinging. Are you both a big fan of, like, this type of genre? I don't think either one of us um, are. No, I don't, I mean, I, I know Josh covers his eyes during... <laughs> I did last night. Right? I do. Yeah. I know what's coming. I cover my eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it I was there. I filmed it. I know <laughs> and, it's coming. And you laughed while yeah. shooting those scenes. Yeah, and I'm like, like nope, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I was like, ah. Um, <laughs> you know? But I think it helps um, having that mentality and not necessarily really loving to put yourself through that helps when you're shooting it because it's it is that all all the more like real and heightened of a of an experience and so that's what comes across on camera. And then the audience gets to go through that. So, I'm curious how different from the role you play in the social network compared to this film. How was, different? <laughs> what sort of challenges? The most different. Yes. Yeah. What, what sort of challenges that do you kind of have to? Yeah, really? I mean, a horror film is um, it's a beast all on its own. It's uh, it's pretty exhausting, physically and emotionally. And you know, this was this was my first opportunity to. Uh, play a lead in a feature film. So that was already its own huge responsibility. Um, but with a horror film, I feel like it's kind of like actor boot camp. Like you never, if you're, when you're shooting a rom-com, maybe there's like an emotional scene or there's like a, I don't know. But, but with this, it's just every single day, all day, the same amount of tension and, and you have to convey that terror at all times. And it's, I mean, I just, I feel so like... So what kind of thoughts do you have to force yourself to think about those scenes to 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 con convey the audience that you're really you know you're in yeah this well I think situation. I think that it starts with um, the physicality actually so you're you you tense your body um, you have that tension in your body physically because that 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 is what's going to read to the audience but then when you quicken your breath and you you know you maybe your hands are shaking because you're tense then all the all of the emotional life kind of pours out of that you don't necessarily have to conjure up any thoughts you're standing in a you know empty cold dark dirty room you are actually standing in that and you're you've worked yourself physically into a place that you feel terrified so um, you just end up it just ends up being that you are I think eventually um, on some like pseudo reality plane Josh, the, the character you portray in this film, uh, Arkin, uh, he was so hesitant at, at the beginning to, to, to want to help this girl. At what point do you think he decided to kind of like, you know, 
um, go and just rescue this poor girl? Well, I, I think more than anything, it was just self-preservation. You know, he, from the first movie, I'd spent a night in this guy's mm -hmm. fun house, you know, in a different setting. So I knew what he was, and, you know, there, there was no part of, of Arkin that wanted to get back in that, no matter who it, it was. It went through hell, right? Yeah, there, you, know, right, you know, if it were his wife or his daughter, I think he would have been there in a second. But, he, you know, look, he knew the chances that this girl were, was still alive were slim to none. You know, he even says that in the movie. If you haven't found her by now, she's she's not alive, man. But, you know, the, I think that's where that hesitation came from, and he was forced into a situation that he had no desire to be in. Mm -hmm. But once you're in that situation, at a certain point, you have to give way to to survival. And I think it sort of awoke that that animal inside of Arkin that kept him alive in prison. Mm -hmm. And you see that about halfway through the movie, you know, start to come out of, out of him. And then when the cage falls around him, you see the animal completely come out of him. Right, right. So that, you know, just that, that instinct of survival completely takes over and just bleeds all the way out of him. Like you, you lose any sort of sense of anything else about him. I just finished watching you in Dark Knight Rises, Curious. Did you shoot that film first or the collection first? I uh, shot the collection first. Oh, okay. Shot the collection first, and then I went and did Batman after that. And I think we were, I was still shooting Batman when uh, we were doing reshoots for. Wow. We did some reshoots for this, yeah. So would there be another installment? There's definitely, you know, the possibility of that, mm -hmm. but it, you know, you know, this business, it all depends on uh, how well the box office, right? The first that's week right. or two. That's sure. right. Yeah. So, if you have to do another film, if let's say, you know, opportunity comes, what is your dream project you would both want to do, love to do? You know, uh, I've been really, really. Um, Lucky and blessed to, uh, we both have to have worked with David Fincher mm. and then working with Nolan. I mean, at this point, I would I would do anything to work with Terrence Malick. Really? Yeah. Have you seen The Tree of Life? Oh, yeah. And you yeah. don't mind? <laughs> 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 Just that movie. I'm not saying, no, he's a great director. But yeah. I'm saying that film alone. Oh, yeah. You don't mind, you know, long... So no, to me, any speaking roles. no, to me that's when, uh, to me that's where it lies because if you can if you can tell a story, without speaking, mm -hmm. you know just with, you know to me that's when acting's in its most beautiful state. If I don't have to to say it, and I can still get it across, mm -hmm. that's where it is, and I think that's what he, is uh, an absolute genius at, is telling, those stories. You, um, I mean, I it's such like such a difficult question. I feel like I'm at so much at the beginning of my career that um, you know it's all the dream role is like just the next one, I guess. How about dream guy, dream actor that you would <laughs> dream actor. beside Josh? I've already worked. How about, how about Bradley Cooper, or Brad Pitt beside Josh? Dream guy, Ooh. Christian Bell, Tom Hardy. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Shia LaBeouf. I think oh, he's a Lawless? phenomenal actor. Oh, yeah, okay. Lawless. Lawless. That was one of the more like entertaining films I've seen recently. I really right. loved that. But I like so that Shia, old Shia. So. Yeah, so Shia, Shia for you. How about Josh? Female, dream female actor. Uh, Laura you Lenny. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Awesome. Good luck to you both. Great oh, job. Thank you. thank you very much. I'm sure you both would get to work with your dream <laughs> actors yes, soon. Hopefully. Wow, thưa quý vị, the collection sẽ được trình chiếu bắt đầu vào ngày mai và cuốn phim này rất là sợ hãi. Những bạn trẻ nào mà thích những loại phim kinh dị sợ hãi như thế này thì có thể đây là một cuốn phim cũng rất là lý thú để đi xem vào cuối tuần này The Collection với Josh Stewart cũng như là nữ tài tử đang lên Emma Fitzpatrick. That's it. Uh, đến đây thì uh, tôi Uyên xin trân trọng kính chào tạm biệt tất cả quý vị. Cảm ơn quý vị rất là nhiều đã theo dõi chương trình ngày hôm nay. Và xin kính chúc tất cả quý vị có một ngày thật là hạnh phúc và bình an.